Howdy, creator! In this two-part tutorial, you will learn how to create a three-team experience full of unique gameplay mechanics. In this part, you'll be learning all about asymmetrical team balancing, which really just means it's a lot cooler if each team has a different number of players. So, grab a cowboy hat because you are about to enter the Old West. Triad Infiltration is a game with three unique teams, the defenders who keep the objective secure, the attackers who use their friendly wolves to steal the gold, and the infiltrators, a small but special team who get to be invisible during the game. They have to be smart and utilize a stealthy approach to their heist, which explains this. All of these verse concepts will be used to asymmetrically balance the teams, and much more in part two. Thankfully, these concepts are fundamental building blocks that can be applied to any experience. Speaking of other experiences, the template for Triad Infiltration found in the editor showcases a different aesthetic and play style than the Western you'll see in this tutorial. Each design decision for the experience is carefully laid out for you to read and understand why certain choices were made. If you'd like to play some Triad Infiltration to get your inspiration, use this island code to check out the Western you'll watch during the tutorial. Decision Time First, you'll need to set up the bases for each team, the defender's base having easy access to the objectives, and the attacker and infiltrator bases placed to encourage movement throughout the map. Start by making a folder for each team in the outliner. Note that each team has a number associated with it on the folder. This is their team index you will need to reference throughout the tutorial. Make sure you place all the relevant devices for each team in the proper folder as you build. Each base needs player spawners and a teleporter that will be used when teams are first assigned. The infiltrator and attacker bases also need a capture area, where players will bring the objectives to score a point. Near the defender's base, you'll need two capture item spawners, placed where the objectives should be. There is a lot of device setup involved, so if you need any help, check out the online documentation for Triad Infiltration. Here you can find the list of devices you'll need and the specific settings to adjust. While those devices should be placed in the bases, the rest of the devices should be organized in a separate area. Set up your item granters to give each team a starting loadout based on your experience. In this western, weapons are found around the map, so starting loadouts are pretty basic. Make sure to give the infiltrators something that plays into their invisibility, like a hunting rifle. After changing all the team settings and inventory device's relevant settings, ensure the infiltrator's device has a maximum shield of zero for their invisibility to work properly. Then, head to the island settings and change these settings so everything works properly. Remember to refer to the documentation if you need any help setting up the devices. Finally, set the team size to be dynamic to allow your verse device to control placing players on teams. Which means it's time to make that verse device. In the Verse Explorer, create a new device named Triad Infiltration Game and drag the device into the level. This device will manage most of the functionality in your game in order to accomplish the goal of a dynamic team size. Double-click the device in the Verse Explorer to open the script, then add a path to the random verse library at the top, a line to include logging, and delete the default lines at the bottom. Next, create a few fields in the class definition. The editable tag above a field means you can adjust its value in the editor, instead of having to return to the script. Create three integer fields for the maximum number of players on each team, and a few arrays for the different devices you already set up. An array is like a grocery list. You can put different kinds of groceries on the list, but they must be groceries. A teleporter array is the same thing. It's a list of teleporters and can only include teleporters. Since they are editable, you can add elements to the array in the editor. The first element you add has a position or index of zero, which is very important to remember. For now, add them in the order of Infiltrator, then Attacker, then Defender. You will also create a variable map called Teams and Totals. A map holds key value pairs, in your case, the keys being the teams of players, and your values being the maximum number of players. Create a reference for each team, and an array to hold all teams in the game. These don't need to be editable since you assign their values in the code itself. When your device first activates, the onBegin method that came with the device will carry out its duty. Here, a few things happen. The teams need to be found and assigned to their references, as well as placed in the map with their maximum number of players as a value. You also need to create a variable that stores all players in the game so you can assign them to a team. If any of that fails, your else expression will take over and let you know there is an issue. Throughout the tutorial, you'll see these log expressions in the code. These are used to help find any bugs, and you can see the output of the log in a playtest. Feel free to pause, playtest, and read the logs to make sure you understand what's going on at each step. If the if expression runs correctly, then you know you have what you need to balance the teams. So, it's time to create an algorithm that will balance the teams asymmetrically. 
Create a new method, balance teams. The void in this context means it doesn't return a value. It just runs the code associated with it whenever it's called. Create a variable for all players, then shuffle this variable to make sure players are randomly placed on teams. Then, for each player in the game, call the balance player method. Balance player is where you place a player on a team. You need this to be its own method to avoid balancing every player when someone joins the game mid-match. This method takes in a player as an argument, which is called in player. First, an option variable for the team to assign the player to is created. An option variable is one that either has no value or one that does have a value for a specific type, in this case, a team. Then, set the team to assign to the team with the largest difference by calling a new method, find team with largest difference. You'll create that method soon, but first finish balance player. The algorithm to sort players functions off the fundamental notion that a player should be placed on a team with the largest difference between their maximum and current players. For example, if the infiltrators have one player, attackers two, and defenders two, based on their maximum player numbers, the player should be balanced on the defender's team for balance purposes. If a team has a larger difference than the team the player was first assigned when they joined, place them on that team. If not, leave them on the team they were already assigned. Now, create your find team with largest difference function. This function returns the team to assign for your balance team method to utilize. Create the optional variable team to assign as you did before, and an integer variable to store the largest difference between current and maximum team sizes. Next, create a for loop. This will do a lot of things for all the code you assign. In your case, for every team, get a current and maximum team size, and then find the difference between those values. If that difference is larger than any found before, that is the team to assign the player to. After that runs for every team, the function returns the team to assign. That finishes off the algorithm, and balancing players should work perfectly. Hey, remember those teleporters you placed down in each team's spawn area? Well, even though players will now be on the correct team, they might not be in the right base. This is because players spawn before being placed on a team, so all you need to do is teleport the player to the correct team's base after you balance the teams. Before you do this, build the verse code you've written so far. Back in the verse script, make sure you are calling balance teams in onBegin. Then, add in a sleep expression before calling a new function, teleport players to start locations. In a for loop, iterate through a team, get the players and teleporter for that team, then teleport each player. This works off the team index you set earlier, so if the order of teleporters in the array doesn't match the team index, things won't work properly. This is a good time to playtest and check that everything is functioning properly. After that, you'll need to create an entirely new function to ensure players get the correct loadout for their team. Assign the item granters to the array in the editor, then create the function grant team weapon that takes in a player as an argument, gets their team, and if there is an item granter in the array for them, gives them the items. This function needs to be called whenever the player respawns, so set up the function onPlayerSpawn and grant the spawn player their weapons. In the onBegin method, you need to subscribe the spawned event to the onPlayerSpawn function. Subscribing an event to a function makes it so whenever the event happens, the function happens. Think of it like having a lookout watching for the event. When they see their target, in this case someone spawning in, they call the function so it can do its thing. Finally, you need to create the onPlayerAdded function that handles a new player joining the game. Call balance player on them, then teleport them to their team's base. Back in onBegin, subscribe the player added event to the onPlayerAdded function and you're done. Be sure to assign all the player spawns to the device, build your verse, and take a breath. That was a lot of code. And that's all for part one. While your teams are now balanced, there is still a lot more to do. In part two, you will learn how to control when the infiltrators are invisible, create an indicator for player holding the objective, and learn how to communicate the game state to your players. Be sure to follow the link in the video's description or click the thumbnail to watch part two. See you soon.